Okay, y'all ready? Here, Rebecca, will you hand those out, sweetie? To anybody that needs one or wants one? Hi, sweetie. Good. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll take off. We're going to get going. We've got a lot to do in the next two weeks. Okay? So everyone got one of the, uh, the worksheets, the torture sheets or whatever you want to call them? I'm enjoying it. I ain't going to torture me. Yeah, good. <laughs> Everybody got one? Okay. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Thank you for you. Lord, thank you for what you're doing among us, and we bless you, and we welcome you here, Holy Spirit, to teach us as it says in your word. Bring the things to mind that you've taught us before, and expand them and expound on them, Lord. And then teach us something new from your word as we look into it. And Father, teach us how to properly minister your word to people. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. How's your week gone before we go any further? Everybody got, had a good week so far? Tiring? Yeah. Is Dusty have to get more, more surgery? He has to get the simple line. Yeah, pick line? Pick line. Yeah. Yeah, ooh. I remember having a pick line. It's not fun. So, ooh. Oh, praise God. But he's doing well. I had a good time with him yesterday. It was fun. So, so. how's Jerry doing? I don't know, maybe I'll talk, talk to Boston to let, let me take him with me. <laughs> so we'll see. Because, <laughs> you know, hunting has a way of healing. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Let's, um, what we're going to look at tonight, as you can see, is called, you know, it's, it's, our, it's our last section. Now, we can get it done all tonight, which I don't think is going to happen, um, It'll probably take two weeks, and I'm, I'm going to purposely stretch it out for a couple of weeks for, the next, for tonight and the next Wednesday night. And then the next Wednesday will be the 30th, which we're not having Dig Deeper, okay? So you get a, you know, for those of you that are regular attenders, that's a night off, and then we're going to kick it back off again the following week. So, because we've been, um, put, oh, no way, there's no way people are frowning about that, okay? Wow. That's a good thing. If you're frowning, that we're not going to have it. Is it? What's going on? I don't know what's I hear crackling. But uh, so tonight, but before we start, it has to do with, with, with this whole thing of the prophetic and, and the giftings and, and thing. Um, I, I sat and watched a, um, well, let me back up. One of my favorite, how would you say, commentators, biblical commentators of today is John MacArthur. Now, he doesn't believe, you've heard me talk about it, he doesn't believe 
And um, he's a cessationist. He's not a continuous, which means that he, is, he believes that many of the gifts, the prophetic, the revelatory gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, um, uh, most miracles or the, the ability to work miracles, the gift of miracles and things is all gone. He says that ended with the apostles. They got a solid support in many ways. It's been that way for years. Um, I know, but that doesn't mean that they believe it. <laughs> it's a, it's, but that's a good point. I wish he thought like you and me. But he's been a, a, um, a proponent of anti-charismatic, the, the, a proponent for an anti-charismatic movement. He believes that charismatic, the charismatic movement that started basically in the mid-60s, late-60s through, is totally unscriptural and is satanic. Yeah. He's written a lot of books. He, he's, a, he's a pastor in, in Van Nuys, California, a Grace, Grace Church. Um, he's been around, in fact, before, even when I, I was, I believed in it, I, I, well, to this day, I still listen to John MacArthur. I mean, I still, I got his commentaries, I've got his books. Um, 90% of what he says is, is probably the most solid biblical interpretation and biblical exegesis you'll ever find anywhere uh, of today. Um, he will go down in history as, as one of the finest biblical scholars of our time. Okay, but on the other hand, this one, one major section he's totally against. And, he, and today started a conference that he ha has his church called Strange Fire which comes from uh, Exodus and Leviticus where, where Aaron's sons offered what, is called, what God called strange fire unto the Lord and the Lord consumed them. And so um, he believes that the charismatic movement, the gifts, the way that is practiced, not the way, but any practice of it in any way, shape, or form that we have today is totally anti-God. And um, there's another, uh, and he's, this, you know, John MacArthur has uh, got his doctorate from Dallas Theological Seminary. He's a very well-learned man. Even though I got a doctorate, I, I don't know if I'd want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him because of just the years of experience he's had. And, and um, Oh, he's major dispensationalism. Yes, sweetie. He would say that that's, that's fine, but what we consider the miracles, the prophecy, healings and stuff is all manipulation today, okay? Is, you know, he doesn't, doesn't believe that God can't do something like that or that God, like if God, if someone prayed for somebody in faith to raise from the dead and, got, and they got raised from the dead, he would probably say that, yeah, that happened, that was God, but that is not the norm, okay? No, that gift, that gift of miracles is gone. We don't need it. Hmm? Dreams and visions to a point are fine, but like prophets, the prophetic is gone. This is the prophetic now, according to John MacArthur, which I, on that point, when I say this is the prophetic, yes, but for, is this all of it? No, okay? Meaning this, you've heard me talk about it, that the word is complete. Any prophecy that goes against the word or says it's extra to the word is wrong, but but the prophetic is backed up by this, where John MacArthur believes this is all there is. The prophetic does not exist. It's just, it's, it's, it's satanic, if anything, and he will call it satanic. He even believes that, that the charismatic movement of today, um, not today, but since the charismatic movement began, the Pentecostalism, Pentecostals that practice this stuff, all of them, quote, I heard him say today, are deceived. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, that's in there. But legalism's also in the charismatic movement, too. Yeah. So, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. So, with that said, there's another doctor called, uh, you know, his name's Dr. Brown. And Dr. Brown, and he's wonderful. Well, you know who I'm talking about. Michael Brown. 
Um, he wrote an article that came out today that was his last appeal trying to get John MacArthur to sit down with him and to go toe to toe, not in an argument, but just listen to what I have to tell you, you know, because some of the finest scholars are Charismatics or Pentecostals, you know, there's, that this stuff ha is going on. Are there, dis are there misuses of it today in the Charismatic? Absolutely, but the, he goes, but many of the biblical misuses also are cessationists too. There's, it's that in that camp, the cessationism camp, and also in the continuous camp. There's, there's misuses on both sides. But John MacArthur's pounding, I mean, it's, if I could have, I would have listened to the whole conference today just to hear his, his stance. And I listened to his section of it, and I was going, John, you, you said nothing. You said absolutely nothing, which I was, it breaks my heart because this man is a major scholar. I mean, it's, I mean, if, if you took my notes from a lot of my sermons and you, you looked them up, you would see that a lot of it came from his commentary series. I mean, he's, he's phenomenal. Absolutely the most precise biblical exegetical you know, stuff you'll ever find in your life. So why am I saying this? Because there's something I want to, I want to read you to start off for tonight. As we're looking at prophetic protocol. This came out uh, in July and I saved it just for, just for tonight. Um, wonderful editor and writer called J. Lee Grady with Charis Charisma Magazine. If you ever read his stuff, it's phenomenal. I love J. Lee Grady. He just, he just lovingly just smacks things right in the mouth. Okay, yeah. Are we missing, do we, are we short one? Okay. Thank you, sweetie. Did you get one of the ones I printed tonight, babe? Okay. How many copies? Who didn't get a thing of notes? One, two, three. Make five, sweetie. Make five. Um, this is called The Five Biggest Mistakes We Make in a Prophetic. And what's beautiful about this is I forgot about this till after I finished all the notes for this, and I went, oh, that's exactly where we're going tonight. So I'm going to read it as an as a, uh, introduction. Just the five mistakes. I'm not going to give you a whole article. Here's the five mistakes that J. Lee Grady says we make in a prophetic ministry today in the prophetic ministry today. Here's the five mistakes he says. Number one, giving prophets an elite status, which is nowhere in the New Testament are prophets exalted to a privileged class. Many prophets get a disease that J. Lee Grady calls egotisticus giganticus. <laughs> Isn't that great? I will steal that, I will steal that, that's great, okay? It does sound like a Ronism. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Leeism, I guess, or, or Gradyism. Egotisticus giganticus, okay? And it's true because it, I've, I've hung around some of the big name prophets of today. I'm not trying to sound like I'm anybody because I'm not. Just, God just happened to put us in those paths. And some of them are very humble men, but some of them are, you know, um, I know one of them when he, if, if you, ask him to come minister at your church. He has a specific amount that he requests or that has to be there, and it's thousands. And then he wants to get, when you sell tickets, he wants 25% he wants of the door, okay, whatever's taken at the door. And then you also have to make sure that he has fresh fruit and Perrier water in his room every day, okay. Um, no, this is true. It's all in the, con he sends you a contract, okay. You're right, but that's what happens. But see, but it's not just in the prophetic. It's, I know there's a lot of preachers that are the same exact way. Okay, yes, sweetie. Yes, he does. You know what Paul said about it? He said, if they're preaching for money, he goes, praise God. He goes, the gospel is being preached. <laughs> okay, so that's the way I look at it. But you know what? That's one of the problems, and that's one of the things that John MacArthur in his, in his book, his new book that's, that comes out at the end of this week called Strange Fire, one of the premises is that because of the, one of the, the misuses is that the prophetic ministry, because of the charismatic movement, there's all these superstars in it and they're just, they're nobodies and they're, they're inaccurate and on and on and on and it's true. So here's the second one. Here's a, number two of five things. Number two is promoting charismatic chaos which means weird, people get weird when they prophesy in order to get attention. 
Some have uh, been deceived into thinking that they must shake their heads or scream in order to make their point come across. You know, and we're going to see some of that as we go through the prophetic protocol tonight. Okay? Like the verse he cites in here is one of the verses I have is 1 Corinthians 14, 32, where it says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. What does that mean? We're going to look at that tonight. Okay, number three, allowing harsh prophetic words to abuse people. There was, he cites a, a story of a lady that's a prophetic lady that um, she would routinely get up and give personal words of, of, to people in the church saying that calamities and God's judgment was coming against them. She even told one person that God wanted to kill them. This is a prophetic person, huh? That's not God, okay? Okay, so we're gonna look at that tonight about harsh words. Okay, number four is not mentoring prophets, which means what? What we're doing tonight, what we've been doing the last nine weeks that we've been together, it's gonna be 10 total that we're together, is basically what is very biblical because in the Old Testament, in uh, Second Kings, there was uh, cited that there was a school of the prophets, which means young prophets went to school to learn how to be prophets. Okay, when they were they were seeing that they had a gifting, a prophetic gifting, they would send them to a school that the prophets would teach these young ones how to prophesy, what's the protocol, how to do things, how to know you're hearing from God. It's biblical, and what we've been doing for ne- almost ten weeks, come next week, is basically like a school of the prophets, not calling it us prophets, but a prophetic type of training. Why? So we know how to do this, what to do, what not to do. Here's number five, one of the biggest. Five biggest mistakes is shutting down prophecy because the gift has been abused. Throwing the baby out with the bathwater, okay? Because of the problems that, you know, Jay Lee mentioned all through this, he says some pastors have just given up and shut down prophecy. But yet, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, to desire earnestly spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. And then in verse 39, it says, desire earnestly to prophesy. So, with that said, Let's start. Here we go. And we're just going to take our time. We're going to go through this. Tonight is a major conversation time, okay? Let's talk through things. I'm going to read through. You're going to fill things out, but we're going to talk through them. You can read the note at the top just saying I've put all this together over the years, all right? Now, number one is ministry preparation. I'm going to give you some questions to use to do a spirit and body check prior to ministry times. It will help you to discern whether the things you are sensing are relating to you or the other person you are ministering to. Now, what we're gonna look at tonight as we go through this is that I put this together a number of years ago, and I've been adding to it as the years go by, to put together for, for basically to set up prophetic ministry teams. These are some guidelines, and this is what I would use among a bunch of other material to train prophetic ministry teams. And you're gonna hear it, it's gonna say, preparing yourself for ministry, but this applies on a day-to-day basis, as well as on a Sunday morning or a prophetic ministry team, because one of the churches I pastor, we had several teams that when other churches would do conferences and stuff, they would call me up and get my teams to come over there and prophesy to the people. So here we go, number one, is there any sin in my life? That's the question you ask yourself. Is there any sin in my life? Number two, is there unforgiveness in me, which is sin? Number three, am I in rebellion to God or those in authority? Am I in rebellion to God or those in authority? Yes. Like take for instance, if a, if a, uh, a young person comes and they're gonna do prophetic ministry, but they are in absolute rebellion against their parents and for some reason, if I found that out, if they confess that to me, I would ask them to either make it right before they start ministry or they won't ministry, minister. And or the same with anybody else. You know, like, um, like take for instance, if a, I've had this happen many times where a, a prophetic person would show up at a couple of meetings and then they go, I, I need to prophesy, and they would start prophesying. But as I found out as the, as the week went on, that they're in absolute rebellion or not in, in any type of church, they're not under anybody, any church's covering in any way, shape, or form, that's rebellion. 
And so, oh, I don't like churches. I, I just go where, where God tells me to go. Flag, <laughs> foul. Okay? No, they won't minister. Because why? That's rebellion. Anybody says, well, I don't need the church. I'm just do what God tells me to do. You can't say that because what did Christ, who did Christ die for? The church, to build the church. Well, I'm part of the universal church of God. I don't need to go any specific, oh, really? Then why all through the scriptures does it say that they, they met in local churches and they were submitted to them? Yes, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. God, look at, look at Balaam. Remember we looked at Balaam? He was an absolute rebellion against God, and God still used him, didn't he? But you don't want to be used that way. Okay, yeah, because the gifts and call of God are irrevocable. But what happens is we're going to see, well, I don't want to jump ahead. You'll see, hang on to that thought, because we'll see why. Okay, we're in rebellion, we're in sin or something like that, and we're ministering. What's going to happen? We're going to see. Okay, or what can happen? All right, everybody Cool. Right? Let's go to the next one. Number four. How do I feel towards this person I am ministering to? Personal grudges definitely can flavor ministry. Imagine prophesying to somebody. You know, someone comes up here and we go, okay, we're going to, you know, we'll use it like we've been doing. Put somebody up here and you're sitting out there and you're mad at them. <laughs> yes, sweetie? <laughs> Grudges, G-R-U-D-G-E-S. <laughs> I had to double check it myself. You asked me on the spot. It's like, <sighs> okay. Yeah, G-R-U-D-G-E-S. -E -E okay. So if, if there's any type of hard feelings, make sure it's right. Remember I told you a story about that, that young man in prison that everyone was worshiping and he was sitting down. And the place is just going bananas and worship. And there's one guy in the church service in the prison sitting down. And one of my br wonderful brothers in the Lord, Chuck Martin, went over and said, hey, how, come on, join it." He goes, I can't. He goes, I'm in sin. He goes, I'm angry at somebody in this place. And I cannot worship until I'm in unity with the whole place. That told a lot, man. And he prayed and got it right with God. And then pretty soon Chuck saw him stand up and put his hands up and start worshiping. And he was in total unity with what was going on because he got it right. He asked for forgiveness. Does that make sense? Pretty cool, huh? Number five, do I have any aches or pains? <laughs> okay, let me ask you a question. <laughs> if you got the flu and you're feeling like someone beat you with a baseball bat, well, no, yeah, yeah don't breathe on me, okay? Um, but you come and you're, you're ministering. How is that going to affect your ministry? Absolutely. Yeah, concentration level is not good. And, you, and when we're prophesying, it's, there's, a, there's a holiness and there's, a, there's a, uh, 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 an importance to it where, just like with me, if I'm, if, I'm really, if I'm sick and I'm really sick, I won't come and preach because why? It's going to affect what's going on, and I don't want anything to affect the presentation of the Word of God. Yes, sweetie. We're going to get, hold on, don't, don't, don't go any further with that. We're going to get to that. That's true. That's very good. Very good. But we're talking about you are sick. You're in pain. You're, you're feeling like someone ran over you with a, base, you know, with a truck or beat you with a baseball bat type of thing. You know, if that's going on, it, will, it can, not will, but it can taint what's going to happen. It can alter. You can prophesy and not quite hear and you can misinterpret. There's a lot of different things. So, if there's something going on physically, be careful. It's all the same. Be careful. Ask yourself this question before you get ready to minister. Okay, number six. How do I feel today? Our moods can flavor our ministry. Ask yourself, am I cranky, irritable, vengeful, bitter? Last thing you want is somebody that's in a grouchy mood prophesying over you. That's the, God's going to kill you. Okay. Okay, I just go, no. <laughs> All right. Now remember, this right here is gonna spread throughout this whole little lesson, okay? 
So let's go to number two, generally safe guidelines. Generally safe guidelines. Don't offer correction. Remember, if they aren't in your area of responsibility, they are not in your area of authority. The Bible tells us that prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. You know, there's, there, there's times, I've been on many, many, many prophetic teams, and there's times where somebody will come in, you don't know these people, but you, you sense that something's really wrong, okay? God very rarely will show you if they're in sin, but you can sense something's really wrong, okay? And so the last thing you want to do is prophesy out of that perception, okay? That's when you see that, say, Lord, if... You know, give me something that can, can move them forward. It's not a correction. Like, you know, I sense that you got real good, a lot of sin in your life. You're probably doing that, 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 and God's not really happy with that. Well, they will go shut down, boom, and walk out, okay? We're supposed to encourage, okay? If God forgets their sin, so should we. But it doesn't mean you can't pick up on stuff at times, and you'll see what I'm talking about this time because if you already haven't experienced that. So we need to be careful. If, they, if they're not in your area, like take for instance, in counseling play times when people are, you know, in church, you know, the church that I, I may be pastoring, like here, this hasn't happened here, so don't nobody freak out. Okay, but there's times where God's told me that out of his love and his grace and his mercy that this person is doing some, this, like this person's in adultery. And so, out of that, I need to, to correct them because I can because of being a pastor, their pastor. I have that area of responsibility. Now, if I go to another place and I pick that up on somebody and I'm not their pastor, I have no place to do that. But there's times I've gone to the pastor and said, let me ask you a question. I believe the Lord pick, you know, showed me something about so-and-so. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on with them. Okay, I just want to submit that to you. Okay, thank you. Because that's not my place. Am I making sense? Okay. Huh? You better be real careful, girl. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 But that was a divine appointment, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a big difference. Big difference. Okay, that was a divine. Yeah. See, it, but it, it's a black and white thing, meaning what? You don't do it, but it's also there may be specific moments, but it, knowing John Wimber, not personally, but knowing from people that know him and knew how he was, he was a very loving man. And he probably did it in such a gentle way that, yeah, you know, John, where you went to, you were, he was your pastor, okay? Okay, so he was a very loving man and he had a gentle way of doing it. And we're gonna talk about that tonight, in the next two weeks, exactly how to present stuff like that. If the Lord makes it specific that you need to share this with somebody, you know, because there's ways to do it and not come across, boom, okay? When I mean correction here, I mean correction like you're in sin, yeah, da, 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 okay? Very unloving, very puffed up, authoritative, okay? So B, let's look at B. Don't prophesy moves to your church or area, okay? Moves, okay? The Lord spoke to me that we're gonna be moving in four weeks and we're gonna be going down the road to Roswell and we're gonna be purchasing this building and God's gonna give it to us scot-free, <laughs> okay, I, I don't believe I was prophesying, okay? All right, that was an example not to do, okay? All right, because let me tell you, do you want the responsibility of that word? Okay, you understand what I mean? Now, God may speak that. If he does, those are the kind of words that you're gonna see later. You write it down, you go, listen, you know, Henry, Ron, Denise, you know, I don't know, 
if this is God or not, but I really sense this, so I'm just gonna submit it to you. It's not one of those words you blast out on a Sunday morning, okay, in great zeal and fervor, okay? Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, sweetie. Oh, did you get a word like that? <laughs> okay. What? Arizona. Okay, well, yeah, we're gonna get to that. Hang on to that thought. Okay. Yeah, well, like you look at somebody and go, why do I see Arizona over here? Okay, well, we're gonna get to those. We will get to, I don't wanna jump ahead. Okay, don't, number C, don't prophesy engagements or marriages. <laughs> okay, more later on this. Okay, D, don't prophesy pregnancy or sex of unborn children. Let me tell you, okay, Brad, if you're watching this, you know I love you. Okay. Thank you, Brad. What is that? Is it, is there a mic on? Is there a channel lighting up back there? One, two, any, that's weird. Huh? Okay. A friend of mine, Brad, and he, this is public knowledge, so I'm not sharing anything that was, that was, uh, um, this, you know, was given to me in confidence. Brad was one of my dear, dear friends to this day. And uh, he, was, um, he was a member of the two of the churches that I planted over the years, him and his family. And Brad was, um, he had a daughter, an older daughter, and for years his wife could not get pregnant again. He wanted more children. And so 16 years into, after his first daughter was born, just by God's intervention, his wife got pregnant. And she was about Denise's age when she was, uh, when our daughter was born. She was in her 40s. And so, uh, it's interesting. Brad believed that God told him it was a boy. And he just spoke that in prophetic, that because Brad's very, very, Brad's scary prophetic in a good way, very scary prophetic. He's a guy who used to point like this at me while I was preaching, okay, through the whole sermon. And then you go, and I told him, well, you quit doing that. He goes, I can't. God told me to do it. I'm going to talk to God about it. You'll have to. Yeah. And so, so Brad, Brad, he just, he spoke prophetically. This is a boy. I know it's a boy. It's a boy. And God's told me it's a boy. Remember this, Denise? <laughs> and he would thank God in the service. I praise God, I want it. Because Brad was a hunter, uh, you know, outdoorsman, fire chief, fire captain, you know, fireman, you know, you know, you know manly man. Uh, 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 smelled, grunted, everything, okay? And he wanted a boy. And so nine months went by. He's taking his wife to the hospital. He calls me up, my son's on the way. I go, good, I'll meet you over there. So I met him over at the hospital. And they go in, and, you know, a couple hours passed. <laughs> Denise is laughing, he remembers. And he comes walking out the door like this. <laughs> Hold on, wait, it gets better, it gets better. And it wasn't a boy. He said... <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you what he said. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That was one of those things that came out of it before I could think. But it, it wasn't a boy. And he was so upset. Not to the fact that it was a girl, because you know, Chelsea has been the greatest joy of his life. You know, and she ended up what's really funny is and Brad never was like pushed him to do boy things, but Chelsea has been the fisher you know, the fisherman, you know. The, yeah, she does. Yeah, but it's not a bad thing. It really, because if you knew the family, you would know that there's not been anything that's happened since then. But he really felt it was a boy. But the, the point of it is that he prophesied that the Lord had told him it was a boy. And God went, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and what's really funny is you hear the horror stories of people prophesying, you know, pregnancies and and, and marriages, you know, you're going to get married. And there's been people that have gotten married that should, probably shouldn't have gotten married because people prophesied that they were supposed to get married. God told me you're supposed to get married. But then there's others that God caused all things to work together for the good. So don't, there's extremes on both sides. All right, now, 
Number, uh, letter E, don't prophesy specific dates or times. God's timing isn't easy to perceive, okay? I think that speaks for itself, all right? Number three, there are three different realms we can speak to. Okay, A, the flesh. Don't allow yourself to be pulled into speaking to what you see in the physical or soulish realm. Anybody know what I mean by that? Okay. Denise, you want to try to explain that one? <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. <laughs> It's like this. Yeah, it's good. It's excellent. There's somebody, this is hypothetical situation, just thinking of it out. There's somebody in the church that you're ministering at, or here, or wherever it may be, and you know them somewhat personally, and you know their heart is to have a child. And it just weighs on them, and weighs on them, and weighs on them. And you see him each week, and your heart is just, ah. Oh. And all of a sudden, you start feeling a churning in you, a prophetic-type churning. And you know what I'm talking about. As time goes on, you pick that up. You just can feel that something's going on. But it doesn't mean, you know, you say, well, maybe the Lord's telling me that they're going to have a child. But what it is many times is their longing is pulling at your gifting. Does that make sense? Okay, and it's pulling and pulling, and you, you're sensing what they want, and it starts moving, and what, and you can get in big trouble. Okay, yeah, Denise, please. Let me give you a flip side of that. In 2004, um, a friend of mine's pastoring in church in Alabama, and he calls me up, and it was, I was well out of the cancer stage. I, you know, I was almost a year clean. And um, the, uh, he called me and said, listen, I want you to come and minister at my church. And I went, sure. And they flew me from Texas to Alabama. And uh, he said, just whatever the Lord tells you, he goes, I know I know the gifting in you. He goes, just whatever you want to do. He goes, I'm just, we're going to do praise and worship, and then you can just take it, whatever God tells you to do. So um, got there on a Thursday and spent Friday and Saturday just hanging out with him and meeting a lot of people. And um, 
Well, it was interesting. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you that in a minute. There was something I didn't know that was going on that God was doing. And there was this young girl and her husband that were, that were in his church, and they were part of his worship team, and uh, just a sweet couple. And every time I looked at her, she reminded me of, somebody, of something. Remember the TV show Three's Company? For all, all the, the, the aged ones can remember that. <laughs> um, remember the black-haired girl in there? I forget. What was her? Chris? Chrissy was the blonde. So, Janet. Okay, whatever. Billy Bob. Whatever. <laughs> But and I, every time I would see her when we would come to, you know, the little fellowship times and stuff before Sunday, I would just look at her and I'd go, and I would think, three's company. So Sunday morning comes. I have an incredible time. And God just, it was, it was probably one of those, not probably, it was one of those wonderful moments where it was just anywhere I looked in that room, bam, God was just giving me prophetic words. Bam, 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 bam. And, you know, and God just was doing incredible things. I, people would come out, you know, I would, prophesy to them, and I pray for them, and boom, they hit the ground, you know, and, or they, this or that, all kinds of, God was just doing some incredible things, and so this girl comes up, and she comes and stands right there, no, excuse me, I was ministering to somebody that had collapsed in the Lord, okay, but they weren't out, they were just like, <gasps> you know, I was praying for them, and she came to help, and she looked at me, and then she stood up, and I stood up, and I went, three's company, and what I didn't tell her is I knew that she was going to get pregnant. Now, here's the backstory that I didn't know. This is, see, that's a way sometimes you can say something without saying it. It's not manipulative. It's not deceptive. It's just there's no promises, but you know God's going to do something. I felt in my spirit God's going to give her a child. Now, I did not know that her and her husband had been praying for years for a child, and she hasn't been able to get pregnant. And I didn't know that the night, Thursday night before I got there Friday, she had a dream. She had never met me before, didn't know what I looked like. But in the dream, I showed up in her dream, and I walked over to her, and I put my hands on her, and she fell out in the Lord. So she's standing there, and I said, three's company. And I reached over to pray for her, and she went, <laughs> I went, cool, next. And so <laughs> I'm over. Nine months later, she has Elijah, Okay. Well, hold on. Then four years later, she has another child. And she's now pregnant with her third child. Was that God? Am I taking credit for that? No, that was God. But this is how things work. Am I, am I being clear? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I know, three's company. <laughs> that's what I was, that's the, the, the neat part about it. Yeah, Jaime. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Why did I know something like that was coming? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. No, don't you start something now, <laughs> okay? Don't you start something. I should have known when I gave him the floor, okay? So here we go. People are sometimes so loud with their wishes in the soulish realm that they, we can pick up and prophesy those thoughts and intentions if we aren't cautious to come up higher to God's plan, okay? And that's not on your paper, okay? I'll read it again. People are sometimes so loud with their wishes in the soulish realm that we can pick up and prophesy those thoughts and intentions if we aren't cautious to come up higher to God's plan. Let me show you in the, in the flip side of this, okay? That has nothing to do with, in the sense of the prophetic, what we're talking about. If we can't pick up things like that, then why, when people go to bars, they can look across the room and see what somebody wants? Get my point? Or somebody sits down there, and I've never, honestly, as God is my witness, I've never had this happen, but I've got a lot of friends that they will go into bars, and they can tell you, they could go, 
boom, boom, I can tell you which girl right here will go home with me at any time because that's what they want to do because you can pick things up. It's not just how do, we, how do people speak. They can speak through their physical, how they're acting, everything, and that, what that is is that's their soulish desires coming out. You see? And so those that are attentive to it can pick those things up, and it's even heightened as a believer, we can pick things up. So be careful. We never prophesy on the soulish realm. Am I making sense? Is anybody confused? Okay. Number, uh, letter B, Satan's plans. Satan's plans, letter B. Person could be under attack. What you see the enemy doing does not have to come to pass. Don't feed water or fertilize that. A person, you may sense that a person's under attack and God may speak to you what they're being attacked about. But don't sit and prophesy. Well, Satan's gonna be attacking you and there's not much you're gonna be able to do about that, but just hang on during the process. You know, how many times, Denise, have we heard stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can't repeat it. Um, <laughs> but don't prophesy those things okay God may show you what's going on the attack is We've, and we're going to see how to present those things in just a few moments I don't want to get into it now but we're going to see how to present some of those things use wisdom if God gave us a tongue and he is called the word himself can he not give us the words to say to bring that to a different place, which means we don't prophesy that. We say, yes, the Lord spoke to me that this is going on in your life, but let's pray against that because that doesn't have to happen. Okay? So, all right, any questions? Okay, letter C. Another realm. God's plans, God's heart. God's plans, God's heart. Here's the realm we want to prophesy in. Number one, always ask God for his heart and plans to be revealed. Always ask God for his heart and plans to be revealed. Speak to the very seed of God within a person in their life and cause it to fertilize, water, and grow. 1 Peter 1.23 tells us of that incorruptible, righteous seed of God planted within all of us. That's what we want to go after, Okay? The scripture is 1 Peter 1, verse 23. Because I don't know if you guys have noticed that, have you, have you noticed in your own lives it's like you're getting more attentive to what, what God is saying or doing? Have you, are you picking things up? Are you seeing it? And it? Isn't it neat? Because once we start feeding this and fertilizing the very giftings of God to hear God, you're gonna see it start elevating I mean, I'm even catching it just in the worship team and stuff like that, is that on Sunday mornings when we pray together, there's more stuff coming out. Man, I really believe God wants to do this, God wants to do that. And you can hear it in your prayers. So, get ready. Yes, Jaime. Mm-hmm. No, no, what I'm saying is don't prophesy that, meaning that here, let me give me a prime example. You're a young guy. I know you're going over the military, and God speaks to me that, that there's going to be a lot of attacks that are going to be happening towards you, okay? The enemy has some plans against you. He wants to take you out. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. And so if I say, listen, Jaime, God's, you know, as you go into the military, you know, I, I really sense the Lord speaking to me that there's going to be a lot of hardships you're going to face. There's going to be a lot of attacks that the enemy's going to want to do. And we're just, you know, it's to just hang on while this is going on and just endure because, you know, you're going to be attacked. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be na 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 Okay. What did that just do for you? Okay. Let's change it. Listen, Jaime, God spoke to me that you, I know you're in a natural, you're going in the military. Um, you I really believe the Lord said that the enemy is wanting to attack you and the enemy's got plans against you. He's gonna tempt you in all kinds of different ways, but listen, let's pray right now because those things don't have to happen. 
God has just revealed this to me because why? Let's do a preemptive strike before this happens and let's pray against those things. You see the difference? Because, you know, yeah, sweet. Please. Mm-hmm, Zach. Let me give you a biblical example of that. In Luke, 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 Luke chapter 22. Look at verse 29, uh, 28, Luke 22, 28. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I grant you, that you may eat and drink at my table and in my kingdom, and you will sit uh, on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. 31, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have what? See, I pray for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. You see the difference? Did Jesus prophesy over him? Did, here, I'm gonna tell you what Satan has wanted to do. But Simon, I have prayed for you. Imagine if Jesus didn't pray for him, what would have happened? Hmm? Exactly. He probably would have washed out, exactly. You see the point? That's how when we prophesy what, the, what we see the enemy wanting to do or what the enemy says he's going to do. Remember, he may, you, know, you may pick something up and the Lord may say, listen, the enemy's going to you know, try this, going to try that. Okay, good. Why is he telling us that? to stand in prayer in all things by prayer that makes sense okay here we go number four making the ministry recipient feel comfortable and receptive comfortable and receptive okay good and receptive r-e-c-e-p-t-i-v-e in church or, or, or other ministry-related situation, ask. Now, I'm gonna give you a long sentence. You phrase it how you desire. Ask if they have ever received prophetic ministry like this before. Now, this is for ministry teams, but it's good to know. Ask if they've ever received prophetic ministry before. Now, you know, sometimes... That if you're not on what is called a ministry team, you're at Walmart, and you're in line. I'm just making this up as I go along. You're in line, and, and the Lord speaks to you about the person in front of you or behind you and gives you word for him. 
Now, most zealous charismaniacs that John MacArthur doesn't like, okay, would turn around and go, the Lord saith to me that thou hast a wonderful heart. And they start doing this kind of stuff, okay? That's freaky. That's weird. That scares me. Awkward, or awkward, okay, sorry. I always do it wrong. I, I call this awkward love, because that means lo I love you, I love you awkwardly. Okay, no, all right. Awkward, okay. So how would we do that? How would we use this principle in that situation? I, I'm, before I answer it, I'm gonna ask you guys. How would you use that principle to make somebody feel comfortable before you speak a word to them? How would you do that? Okay, good, exactly, say hi. Well, you're in the line, and, you, and there's two people in front of you, and they only have one item each. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Good. Good point, Larry. Okay, <laughs> okay, hey, just take us to leave this. <laughs> uh, look, here, here's, here's a Ronism, okay, here's how I would probably do it, which I've done, you know, and I don't know the person to say, excuse me, hi, my name is Ron. Oh, really, hi, Ron. This may seem a little different or strange to you, I said, but you know what, I said, I'm, I'm a believer, I'm, I'm a Christian, and I was just standing there, and I believe the Lord spoke something to me. Would it be okay if I tell it to you? Now, they can say, no. They can say yeah, and I, yes. I say, if they say yes, I say, you know, I'm not trying to be weird or anything like that because that's not me. And by the time you say that, if you say it very nicely, eloquently in some way, shape, or form, they will pro most of the time they go, oh, yeah, okay, sure. Well, what is it? And you tell them. And many times it'll strike them because it's right on the money. Yeah. And if you can, if, if it's in a place where you can do that, say, it, it's, I'd love to pray for you if, I, if I'm able to. Many times, most people will let you. you know, don't be freaky weird. You know, I believe the Lord just spoke to me for you. And it was, I, I had this picture. Yeah, you get laughed at, okay? But don't do that. Don't be freaky weird, you know? You don't, okay, well, tell, I'm going to jump ahead, but I don't want to go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, when they do that, say, I thank thee. Okay. <laughs> See if thou later. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number two under that one, okay. Explain that you are not there to give correction or dig up old sins. However you want to put that in there. Explain that you're not there to... Give correction or dig up old sins. Now, this is on a ministry setting. When someone comes in, if we have a, uh, when we put together the ministry teams, the prophetic teams, you know, there's going to be times where, where somebody will want prophetic ministry. Like we, we uh, attended, we weren't on staff, but we attended a church in Texas just before we moved from Texas. Um, it was called Restoration Church, and we were on the prophetic teams. And on Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 7 o'clock, from 7 to 9, you can make an appointment to to be, you know, to uh, come in to a prophetic team and see what the Lord may say. And so we were on those teams, and what you would do is you would explain these things. Now, we, we want to make you feel comfortable. We're, your sins are not going to be exposed or anything like that, you know. And so, you know, if, and we ask them, have you ever received prophetic ministry before? Some, most would say yes. Some would say, no, not really. Really? Oh, this is your first time doing it? Oh, yeah. 
oh, just relax. Your sins are not going to be exposed. God's not going to come down on you. He's not mad at you. He loves you. you know, and he would do everything he can to make him feel comfortable. And then they'd go, okay. Does that make sense? All right, so don't tell them that you know, their sins are not going to be drug up and not going to correct them and that everything's under the blood, okay? And all we're going to do is ask God to show his heart and plans for them. Number three, advise that they are responsible to chew up the meat and spit out the bones. You know what that means? Chew up the meat and spit out the bones? What you feel the Lord is speaking is true, take it in. What doesn't seem like it was God, spit it out. All right? We're supposed to judge what God, what the, the words that people give us, okay? We judge them, pray about them. All right? Number four, then pray for God to reveal his heart for the person and wait on his reply. Pray for God to reveal his heart and then wait on his reply. Is this making sense tonight? Okay. Okay, everybody with me? All right. Letter B. In church slash public situation. In a church slash public situation. Number one. If possible, write the word down and hand it to them. Write the word down and hand it to them. If allowed verbally, give the word to them. Write the word down and, give, and hand it to them. Number two, protocol. Approach the stranger with manners, just like I was talking about. You don't say things like, I've seen people do this, because we've been parts of major prophetic conferences and things, and been on the prophetic teams and stuff. And I used to take my, you know, those, those like name tags like Norm has, you know, for the, for the, uh, for the greeters. Well, we have those, kind of, we had those kind of things. I would take them and stuff them in my shirt when we were in the regular group assembly, because everybody wanted, <gasps> give me a word, give me a word. But I've seen other people, you know, that I call them sidewalk prophets or parking lot prophets, they uh, get a word for somebody and they go, hey you, God wants to say something to you. Come back here. Just like that, I'm serious. You, know, <laughs> you, know, you don't do that. Or you walk away and go, hold on a minute, God wants to tell you something. Pro yeah, but that was different. <laughs> That's, I'm talking it's a little different than this. This is rudely, okay? This is rudely, but you're right. I mean, he was, Bobby Connor, Bobby Connor's not, he's strong sometimes, very strong, because he's a big old guy, and he, when you see him, I mean, he makes me look short and tiny, okay? He's a big guy. He looks like a grizzly bear with a beard, okay? And, um, but he's very, he's got a big old deep voice, so however he says it, it's, you know, comes out like, rawr, rawr. but he's a loving guy, but you're, you're right. The, um, but use manners, Use manners, use, uh, be a gentleman, be a lady when you present a word to somebody. You know, do it loving, do it with respect, okay? Number, uh, the second bullet point, explain, explain. Sometimes I feel the Lord speaks to me about people and I want to, and I, what I perceive he told me for you is, okay? That's one way of saying it. You can word it any way you want. Just use it, just explain to them what's going on. Don't just go, God's got a word for you. What it is is this. Boom, 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 boom. No, no, that, that freaks people out, especially if they're not used to that kind of stuff. So treat them with respect. Explain to them what's going on. You know, sometimes the Lord speaks to me. You know, I, really, I was praying for you, and you know, I, I saw you over there, and I believe the Lord told me something to tell you, and if, if I might, may I, may I share that with you? And most people go, yeah, Sure. And they'll go, oh, okay, well, thank you, thank you. Okay, is it okay if I pray for you? If you have that moment, do it. If you don't, just deliver the word and thank them and honor them and leave. All right? And the next one is give the word in clear, concise manner, say thank you, and leave. Give the word in a clear, 
concise manner, say thank you and leave. Okay, we okay? Want to keep going? Yeah, we've got a couple minutes. Let's, go, let's finish up number five here. Okay, operating in integrity. No foreknowledge. No foreknowledge. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3. You can look that up on your own if you would like to. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3. If you know something in the natural, be honest and say something like, Okay, be honest and say something like, I know this part in the natural, state it, whatever that may be, but I believe that the Lord gave me this word or scripture for you regarding it, and then state what that is. Okay? If you know something in the natural, and you go, why would I say that? Because sometimes you'll go to minister somewhere, and the pastor or, or a friend will say, listen, you know, Susie really needs a word. She's really praying about this, and they will tell you what she's praying about. What is a lack of integrity is that when Susie comes to you or is brought to you for ministry and you say, I believe you've been praying about this and dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, you hear what I'm talking about? Because what does that do? It gives you so-called credibility. The only credibility we, have, we want is Christ and we want him to get all the credit. Okay, so don't, don't if you have a foreknowledge of something that someone told you, then say, listen, um, your pastor told me that you were praying for a child or praying for your husband because he's not saved. Well, I believe the Lord spoke to me about this. And you give them the word. And that way, there's integrity and then there's the word. That makes sense? If you know something in the natural, be honest and say something like, I know this, you know, so it's be honest and say something. If you don't do this, you risk bringing condemnation on yourself that will shut you down. And you know what I mean by that is this. You say and you act like you have the knowledge that Susie's praying for her husband, but you were told that. And you come in and you do that. In most cases, if you have any type of conscience and you said that, all of a sudden you realize I just bold faced lied and I made it look like I knew that by the Spirit. And then what happens is, is all of a sudden this condemnation starts coming. And let me tell you, you wanna know what will shut down the prophetic that quick? Is that. Because all of a sudden, instead of prophesying, you're thinking about what you just did. And then you're not hearing God, you're not listening for God and it will shut it down. That makes sense? Y'all get real quiet. Okay, second bullet point. If we want the spirit of truth to operate through us, we must operate in it, or in him. If you want the spirit of truth to operate through us, we must operate in him, okay? It shouldn't be it, it should be him. Okay, everybody got everything? All right. B, mailman theory. Mailman theory. The mailman theory. Number one, drop it in the box and leave it there. That's not drop and run, but it's drop it and leave it there. It's like this. You have a package here, I use this piece of paper. You got it. God told you something. Many times, as, and I've done this, I did this so many times. You're a little insecure about it. You're gifting. You're still trying to learn about it. You're still walking. You're still not sure. Or you, gotta, you think you got to wear, but you're not really sure about it. So what you would do with insecurities, you would go, here's the, I'm just using as an example of the word. Chris, here's, here's the word I got for you. And here, grab it. 
And, and what, what, I'm really not, I don't know how, how I, you know, but I just want, you know, and I want you to understand, you know, don't worry about it. I, I, you know, I just, uh, but this is what I, get the point? How many of us have ever done that? You know what I'm talking about? This is what we should do. Listen, I believe the Lord spoke to me about something that Chris, here's what it is, blah, blah, blah. Okay, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Drop it and leave it. Don't qualify it. Don't try to explain it. Okay? Just give it. You're just the mailman. Don't try to apologize for God if it doesn't happen. You see what I'm talking about? But it doesn't mean you get cocky, because I've seen guys, oh yeah, what's wrong? Oh, Chris, God told me to tell you this, but God bless you. <laughs> see what I mean? That's when the guy turns his back, you pick up a hymn and go, boom. Okay. Now, number two, don't force acceptance. Don't force acceptance and don't try to cause them to walk it out. We are not the Holy Spirit. Don't force acceptance and don't try to cause them to walk it out. You're just the mailman. Get the point? Okay, we're gonna put on hold. We're gonna stop right here at, at number six, at Roman numeral six, corrective words. We'll stop there. <laughs> okay. Now, all right. Who wants to sit on the stool tonight? Come on, Rebecca. Corson, come on, girl. Come on down. Your number's been called on the Prophecy is Right.